The sun rises over Cape Town as Thania and her mother Nagla prepare morning tea and co-sisters. Sweet sticky donuts covered in coconut crumbles, a traditional Cape Malay delicacy. Today, they are setting out to visit what's left of Cape Town's District 6. It was once a bustling multi-ethnic neighborhood near the city center, where many Cape Malays lived, including Thania's mother. In 1966, it was declared a white area by the apartheid government. Over the next 16 years, more than 60,000 people would be expelled to outlying areas, like Cape Flats, where Thania's family lives now. I only have good memory. I remember streets filled with kids. All kinds of smells, from fish to fruits. You could even smell the sea if the wind blows. It was like a melting pot of different cultures, I, I would say. Before the, all the apartheid laws took over, my father decided to move. I was young when we left. We moved before the bulldozers came in. Their houses in District 6 were flattened. My father lost his businesses there, lost his home, everything. Today, they search for traces of Nagla's old home, a barren land and atmosphere. District 6 remains a visible scar on Cape Town's landscape. My parents were very politically active and they fought through the political uh, struggle of apartheid in South Africa. And um, I mean, it tore our home apart, tore our lives apart. My father was a political exile and he ended up moving to the UK when I was four or five years old. So, I mean, our whole lives have been intertwined with the apartheid sagas. Under apartheid, part of the Cape Malay community remained in nearby suburb Bokarp where Thania's forefathers established themselves. Bokarp was like the slave quarters and also the Malay quarters. Declared a Cape Malay area, the suburb was spared the bulldozers, history preserved. Today, its brightly colored houses line cobblestone streets as Table Mountain looms in the distance. Beautiful now, the history here is complex. As the Dutch began colonizing portions of Southeast Asia in the 17th century, they exiled locals opposing their rule and sent them to work as slaves at the Dutch trading post in Cape Town, which they also occupied at the time. These political and religious exiles came from all socioeconomic backgrounds. Some were even royal. We are taught that we are just slaves. Um, that is what uh, history teaches us here in South Africa. But what I discovered was that these exiles that were brought here from Indonesia by the Dutch um, were actually aristocrats and they were royalty and they were educated and they were also incredibly influential. That is why they posed such a huge threat to the Dutch colonial rule of Indonesia. And because of this threat, they were brought here and um, put into exile far, far away from their homes and their families. Thania is a descendant of Tuanguru, meaning master teacher in the Cape Malay dialect, an important founding father of Islam in South Africa. Tuanguru was a prince from Indonesia. He was exiled from Indonesia in 1780 for his staunch opposition to Dutch colonialism. For 12 years, he was imprisoned on Robben Island, later made infamous by Nelson Mandela's imprisonment. Tuanguru spent that time writing the Quran from memory, creating Bokup's first library of Islamic text. After his release, he founded the Awal, South Africa's first recognized mosque. I always knew that I was a direct descendant of Tuanguru because it's something that my father had traced back many years ago when he did our family tree. But what I did not know was that he was royalty. This discovery gave Thania a strong desire to document her heritage, not only as Cape Malay, but as someone with a royal legacy through an art project, appropriately named I Am Royal. Well, I started physically doing it a year and a half ago, but I think I started it in my mind a while ago. It just needed to be done. 
she created a series of photographs of herself in traditional Cape Malay outfits, demonstrating the passage of her ancestors through time. I felt the need to identify us because everybody keeps calling us slaves and I think that we were much more than slaves. We actually have a legacy behind us and something to be proud of in my project. I followed our historical trajectory from where we were and to where we've come. What I used was regalia. I got dressed up in everything that we want to be seen in. I went to the Indonesian embassy and I got all these amazing costumes which are synonymous with royalty, aristocracy, because this is how I want us to be remembered. I think that a lot of people have now started delving into their own past and finding out, was my family really that good? Was my family really this? Was my really, you know? And yeah, it seems to be making some kind of a difference somewhere. For those in the Cape Malay community, most of their narrative is passed down through word of mouth. In Bokarp, one woman is the memory keeper. I was born in this house. My parents lived in this house and all the children were born in this house. This is my mother and my youngest brother. He lives in London. He's a school teacher. And, um, and this is my father's sister. It was this wonderful feeling of one family. And that is something really great. As the informal community archivist, she has tales and photos to go with them. I always wanted to know more about the history of things and reserve things for one day. And I've always been collecting things and keeping. That is my elder sister and her husband. In our culture, we still have this sort of togetherness and that's why I'm still very attached to this area of Goldbrook. Still living here, still enjoying it.